Welcome, I'm Lou. Welcome, I'm Alexis. Thank you for joining us today. We love you. For today's call to worship, we will be saying a we will be saying a prayer written by seven-year-old Sarah Wilson in New Zealand. Here we go. You make turtles that paddle. You make penguins that waddle. Shine your love, shine, shine. You make sheep so woolly, you make us so wonderfully. Shine your love, shine, shine. And I will pray upon a star, for you love us as we are. I will shine my life for you, for you died to show the way. Love is in your heart, we will play our part. Shine your love, shine, shine. All the birds in the trees, you set all the world free. Shine your love, shine, shine. There we go. When you give money to our church, the money goes to people who are homeless or who need food. Our church also helps take care of Camp Crystal. And even though I'm sad I can't go this year, we want to make sure that we can always go next summer. So not, a, not everyone has, has extra money to give to the church, but that's okay. Praying and sharing the love of Jesus are both other ways to give. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, please help us in this time where coronavirus is passing through our communities. We know that we sometimes forget to give of ourselves. We thank you for all of, for all the gifts you give and that we now share in your name. With Jesus Christ, your son, we pray, amen. Please visit massingdisciples.org to give online or to find our mailing address. Thank you. I'll be reading from the first chapter of Acts, verses 6 through 14. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come the same way as you saw him go. Then... They returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 14. Before the book of Acts, the book of John sets up a lot of expectations about what the world is going to be like now that Jesus has died and rose again. Everyone knows that the world is going to be different. At the beginning of our scripture, the disciples ask Jesus, when will you restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus tells them, it's not for you to know the time that God does things. Then Jesus tells them that they will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon them. Jesus then ascends into heaven and two robed men appear and ask the disciples, why are you just standing there gazing up at heaven? And it brings the disciples back to reality. It's kind of like one of those moments when my mom says to me, Earth to Jack, hello, are you there? Without really knowing what else to do, the disciples returned to Jerusalem, isolated themselves, and began to pray and wait. I think this relates a lot to what we are experiencing now. Our world has suddenly changed because of COVID-19, just like their world was suddenly changed when Jesus died and rose again. 
Just like the disciples, I have a lot of questions about what is going to happen and when it is going to happen. I've asked my mom a lot, when can we go camping? When can I go to a friend's house? When can I go to grandpa and grandma's? Her response is always, I don't know. So just like the disciples, all I can do is wait. I'll admit I don't pray every day like Jesus' followers did. I mostly spend my time playing Fortnite, doing schoolwork, and playing outside. But this story gives me faith that one day my questions will be answered on God's time. Jesus promised them that the Holy Spirit would come down and they would receive power. And even though they had to wait a little while, we know his promise came true because next week we celebrate Pentecost. Even though waiting sometimes sucks, it teaches me to have patience and wait for God's answers. And sometimes waiting is a good thing, like when you are waiting to go on vacation and you're counting up down the days. It's exciting to anticipate what will happen. I think God sometimes makes us wait because if you get everything you want at the exact moment you want it, it would become boring. Waiting makes us appreciate things when it does happen, like waiting for Christmas. I think as soon as Jesus went up to heaven, God could have sent the Holy Spirit, but he didn't because he wanted them to wait, because sometimes waiting is good and necessary. Jesus' followers didn't freak out when they had to wait. They are a good example for us that when we can be calm when we have to wait, even if we don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what the world is going to be like when this is over, but I trust that God will reveal his plans when it's time. Amen. Thank you, Jack. Good morning, everyone. In Acts 1, 6 through 14, it talks about the apostles saying to Jesus, Lord, when will you restore our kingdom? And Jesus replies something about how the dates set by the Lord are not to be known until they happen. We can all relate to that right now. We have no idea when COVID-19 will end and when we can finally be together again. The future is unknown. There was another time in my life where I had no idea what God held in store. When I lived in Holt, everything was familiar and I knew lots of people. When I moved to East Lansing, I had no idea what was going to happen, whether I would get new friends, whether I would even like East Lansing, and would I even fit in. I was feeling nervous, but also excited in a way. I was finally getting my own bedroom. We would live by the East Lansing Aquatic Center and Tasty Twist, my favorite ice cream place. The first day of school, I was so nervous that I didn't express myself when I colored my name tag. Now that I think back on it, I wish I had decorated my name tag with the things and colors I like. I didn't make friends for a while. I prayed to God though, but I came to school every day with a smile on my face and my parents talked to my teacher. And around halfway through the year, I received one of the best friends I've ever had. In the chapter of Exodus, everyone had to wait for a servant of God to come and free them. The chapter of Exodus also ties into what's happening in the world right now. God sent down plagues and sickness. Well, guess what's going on in the world right now? Sickness. Because in the story of Moses and the Israelites, they prayed and persevered, and after some time, they were freed. So we know it has to get better at some point. In Acts 1, 6 through 14, at the, end of, at the end, Jesus rises up to heaven and everyone has to persevere and continue carrying Jesus' message into the world. So for us, while the future is unknown, just pray and have faith that things will get better. Thank you, and now on to Louisa. When this pandemic first became a big deal, I just wanted things to be normal again. But now I'm beginning to think about what will happen once it is normal. Now that we've gotten used to it, this, will it be as difficult setting back to going everywhere and doing everything you would normally do, like school or work? I know it will be different for everyone. Some people will get back into the swing of things super fast, and for others, it will take much longer. It feels like when I played wheelchair hockey. When I first went onto the wheelchair, it was kind of awkward, and I had a little trouble getting used to it. But by the time we were done and I tried to get out, I kind of forgot how to stand, so I lost my balance for a second. Some of the struggle right now is thinking about when things like schools should reopen. On one hand, schools need to open soon so kids can get an education. But on the other hand, reopening too early could lead to more cases resulting in quarantine to go on even longer. Restaurants and attractions, too. Leaving things closed is taking a toll on the economy. But just like schools, reopening them could result in longer quarantine. So it really is an important decision. 
and you won't know who chose right until it's too late to do much about it. You just have to find what God wants us to do in these tough times and pray for everyone that is having a hard time, either from being separated from family or someone close to them having COVID-19 or anything else that might that may be happening. We don't know when or how this will end. We can only hope that it ends soon. but are fighting other sicknesses. We pray for our governor and the people who advise her to keep making good decisions that keep us all safe. We pray for teachers who are working so hard to keep us kids educated when we can't be together in person. We pray for doctors and nurses who are risking their lives to help save others. And we pray for our new pastor in hopes that he will feel happy and safe in this new community. Together we pray for our congregation and for our extended church family. We especially pray for 
For Shirley Ellis, Shirley Ellis, recently diagnosed with cancer and starting chemo. For Tony Hand, Handley, experiencing chest pain, but not yet seeking treatment. We pray for Shauna Bodine's brother-in-law, recovering from a stroke. We pray for Jill and Jim Dimmitt and Stu and Carol McAlvey. We pray for the family and friends of Claire Ward, mourning his passing, and we give thanks that his organs could be donated for the healing of others. And we give praise for my Aunt Emily, who was hired for a new job this week after being laid off last month. Finally, we pray together the prayer your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is communion time. Well, usually. This is um, an excerpt from the Bible. For I received from the Lord what I have delivered to you, that, uh, th that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread and broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for, uh, is for you. Do this and remember it for me in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it. In remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. First Corinthians 11, 23-26. Now we shall pray. Dear Lord, I hope that everybody that needs help gets well is, and that Miss Jill gets better and that Uncle Nicky, if he's not already healed, gets better. Do you see my prayer? In closing, we remember that God did this for a reason. Even though we might not know why, we know that he's always with us. Amen. Amen. For our final hymn, please join us in singing Shine, Jesus, Shine.